Right, so let's talk about Dow Jones. I, today I decided to just focus on Dow Jones, all right, because I do see a little bit of a resistance. And I just wanted to talk about the concept of buying low, selling high. Uh, although that is not easy to time, I mean, an entry, doesn't mean that we can just randomly be buying at any random places. So it makes a lot of sense if you can just follow certain patterns that you see and probably use that pattern to help you to time a little bit, right, for your entry. I mean, if you can save like 10, 20 percent, why not, isn't it? Rather than to just suffer that 10 to 20 percent drop after you bought in. Alright, so let's head to Dow Jones and to take a look at the technical viewpoints and as well as uh, what other things you need to look up for and why do I specifically picked up Dow Jones as one of the index which I think might be looking a little bit more bearish for now. This is a chart on DIA which is the ETF of Dow Jones index. The reason why I picked this is because that out of the 30 stocks that's in the Dow component because five of them which is uh, United Health, Microsoft, Goldman Sachs, Home Depot, AMGN, uh, four of them, they do not make new high. Okay, Only Microsoft, which is belongs to tech stocks, they make new high. So with this, I think that potentially Dow is looking a little bit weaker because we don't have all these tech stocks there. But of course, that if you understand that tech stock might be correcting, then uh, NASDAQ, which was one of the index I covered in this video, will make a better choice. But first, uh, let's focus into the RSI of uh, Dow Jones DIA, which is the ETF, right, for a long time, okay, and we've not seen DIA RSI coming below 70. By right, if it's at 70 and above, this means that it is overbought, but overbought means that it's more expensive relative to the previous period, but if it has been moving up, then it will definitely become more expensive, isn't it? Uh, so what I'm observing is that the first time that RSI enters below 70. All right, this gives a little bit of a sense that it is no longer into the overbought region and probably that's one of the reasons why it's not overbought because price is correcting. So that's the first clue here but of course you know that I'm not too much into the indicators but more into the prices. Right. So what I am doing right now here is to draw in the upsloping line that connects the two low and to map in an equidistance channel. So the highest point between these two low here uh, would be this point here and it's coming very nicely into here to give a resistance level. So this is where you have that uh, high which is the top of that channel. Uh, so what I'm trying to say here is, well, although we can't time the entry, but one of the clues that we have here is that Dow isn't at the low side. So what do I mean by the low side, right? Uh, if you guys like to buy, then it makes sense to buy after it had fallen for a while, after it had fallen for a while, after it had fallen for a while, right? So in this same aspect, it makes sense for price to drop a little bit more before you want to consider a buy, isn't it? So right now, being at the top of the channel and also that it hasn't uh, moved down a little bit makes me think that right now price is near to the high is definitely not at the low okay so we have one which is RSI giving us clue and second would be at the top of the channel I think more important uh, my uh, very important clue is with this pattern which is called wash and rinse which is something that I've designed uh, this gives a bit of a understanding into the strength of the market participants here which essentially we know that bulls had been buying it up for a long long time since price had a breakout every time when price had a close above the previous high so this is what I mean here for example price had a close this one had a close above the previous high or this had a close above the previous high so this one here had a close above the previous high there wasn't any occasion that price actually closed back above the line that it broke Okay, so it doesn't close back down for a long time, it doesn't close back down, and it doesn't close back down. But this time round, price had a closed above the previous high, so this was where price closed above the previous high, and we saw that uh, based on DIA, price actually closed back down on a weak close. That means, you know, it didn't manage to stay at a high. So I call this a washed and then a rinse here, and of course that I would like to see continuation of price dropping, and ideally below this level here, which is about 380 level, but 
you know, right now, based on last week close, this uh, was the first sign that Dow could be bearish for now, or at least, you know, it's warrant a look again whether we should be that bullish for Dow. I hope that you enjoyed this video. Uh, please also watch the other video where I talk about Nasdaq and the patterns that uh, you know you should look out for should there be a market crash. Well, I do not think that there is a crash yet. It doesn't seem to be, but at least there might be some form of a profit taking, especially in the tech stocks. And likewise uh, for Dow, I've given you the very important levels to look at. Now, if you do have any other I mean, indexes or stocks that you want me to talk about, do let me know. I'll be happy to talk about that. Uh, one of the things I want to cover is also gold. So I cover quite a lot of gold and in the next video, I'll be talking about gold and what I think will be the future development of gold. All right, till then, see you and remember to hit the subscribe button.